What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my stream today. Today we are featuring a very popular and highly suspect post on archaeologyworld.com. Yeah, so there you go. That's like my uh, faux uh, YouTuber introduction. <laughs> Hopefully you all are doing well. I appreciate you checking out this video. Feel free to like and subscribe. I lost a subscriber on BitChute. I think it's because I posted too many videos of Dragon Age Origins. And to them I say, you're free to do as you may. Sometimes I find some cool stories that I want to share with you, and sometimes I just want to play some video games. That's all there is. No big, uh, you know, complex issues on this channel. This channel is the oasis away from all of the chaos and everything else in life. Come here to learn some cool stuff about the world, maybe some philosophy. At some point, I am going to get back around to doing some more Baha'i videos because I want to get through some answered questions because that book has a lot of really interesting topics. <laughs> Interesting. Said it again. There's a game for you. Uh, every time I say interesting, do something, you decide. Um, so in, in terms of uh, some answer questions, there's like all kinds of philosophical discussions, different translations of the Bible, different uh, iterations of different texts, all kinds of stuff. It's pretty cool. So I just got to get around to doing that. But let's go ahead and get to this article here. And this kind of ties in a little bit to that other article that I read about the Sphinx supposedly being over 800,000 years old. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's verifiable. This article just kind of brings up this topic about this huge uh, complex that was kind of built underground. And they're kind of going along the same lines as that Sphinx article. I guess the gist of that Sphinx article was basically stating that, according to them, the the erosion wasn't necessarily due to the sand and the wind. It was due to water. And I think that kind of ties into this because they're saying the way that this was eroded was not specifically due to uh, to wind, I think, or something I Okay, we'll double check it here. But so here we go. Is this a huge million year old man made underground complex? A new discovery can change everything we know about the age of human civilization. Advanced civilizations were present a million years ago and created the largest of all buildings ever seen. Now, I don't know about that. A million years ago? I mean, I don't know. I don't know if, like, I would find it that surprising if humans had been around a million years. Now, if there was like some kind of like, you know, space traversing civilization, I think that would be pretty hard to believe. Like if humans were like a space age species a million years ago and we just bombed ourselves back into the Stone Age, which is like a theory that some people have. But this guy, Herbert Midras in Adullam Grove Nature Reserve in Israel, is part of what geologist Dr. Alexander Kultepin hypothesizes to be a massive complex of prehistoric underground structures stretching across the Mediterranean. While most researchers and scholars around the world agree that human civilization emerged some 10,000 to 12,000 years ago, there are numerous discoveries that point to a very different past. However, many of these incredible findings have been considered impossible due to the fact that they alter our written history. So I would say to this, like the easiest thing to do to deal with this is all you have to do is just evaluate the information. So I, I mean, in terms of like the scientific community, just go ahead and investigate it. And if it's false, just, you know, just prove it false or do some uh, scientific analysis to, you know, test these individuals hypothesis or hypothesi, hypothesis, however you say it, and see if there's any merit to what they're claiming. You know, instead of just, you know, objectively staying or, just deciding that it's false outright, I don't think that's going to do anyone really any good, you know? In many years, researchers have begun to look at the history of civilization on Earth with an open mind. One of these researchers is undoubtedly Dr. Alexander Kultepin, a geologist and director of the Natural Science Research Center at Moscow's International Independent University of Ecology and Politology. During his long career, Dr. Kultepin studied numerous ancient underground structures, mainly in the Mediterranean, and identified numerous similarities between them which led him to believe that they were connected in some way. But the most amazing thing about this place is that the extreme geological characteristics made him believe that these megastructures were built by an advanced civilizations that inhabited the Earth millions of years ago. Yeah, that's pretty wild. I mean, that changes everything. And now I, I really uh, think it would be a good idea for the scientific community to just try to objectively take a look at these different you know, theories and whatnot. Usually it seems like vested interest is try to suppress like all of these different like thoughts and say, no, that's not true. Don't even look into it. Well, if it's not true, just go ahead and prove it's not true or at least like conduct some additional evidence. The caves of Marisha and Bet Guvern. I mean, it's pretty cool. 
archaeologists working in the region usually date the sites by looking at the settlements located on them or nearby. But these settlements were simply built upon existing prehistoric st structures, Kultipin said. Writing on his website, Kultipin says, When we examined the buildings, none of us even for a moment had any doubt that these structures are much older than the ruins of the Canaanite, Philistine, Hebrew, Roman, Byzantine, and Roman cities and colonies. Other cities and settlements that are on approximate dates. Yeah, the only issue with archaeologyworld.com is I guess they have a lot of con contributors from around the world, and sometimes their uh, writing can be a little disjointed. During his trip to the Mediterranean, Kultipin was able to accurately record the characteristics present in different ancient sites, something that allowed him to compare the similarities and details that tell an incredible alternative story, one that has been firmly rejected by traditional scholars. Yeah, traditional whatever, <laughs> like uh, scholars, scientists, like what was it like in the 1800s? Um, the scientific community was totally against this guy that was going around telling people to wash their hands after they helped women give birth to children. He had his theory or hypothesis at the time that maybe it wasn't a good idea to mix the blood from like one woman when he gave birth to a kid to like another woman. And that might have something to do with like all of the instances of, you know, dying during childbirth. And a lot of members in the scientific community just refused to even wash their hands. They're like, no, that's just preposterous. They didn't even want to give it a shot. And I guess it was partially because they didn't want to think about the idea that they were rather indirectly uh, resulting in the death of all these women. But, you know, there can be a lot to be said about consultation, just taking a step back, logically thinking things through, and just seeing what, you know, the results will be and however they may come about. While traveling near the Hervat Bergen ruins in the Aldulam Grove Nature Reserve in central Israel, Kultipin remembered a similar feeling when he climbed to the top of the rocky city of Kavusin in Turkey. Almost a deja vu feeling, Kultipin said. I was personally convinced once again that all of these rectangular cutouts, artificial underground structures, and megalithic debris scattered everywhere were or were part of an underground megalithic complex that collapsed due to erosion, he said. Okay, so so far that hasn't really been... From what I've seen, and here I think the rest of the article kind of goes into this a little bit more, but so far there hasn't really been any specific uh, scientific evidence for him to verify his hypothesis. It's just like a gut feeling. So let's see what we have in terms of the erosion in the mountain formation. In his work, Dr. Kultipin argues that not all parts of the giant complex are located underground. Some are high above the ground as the ancient stone city of Cappadocia in Turkey, which Kultipin includes in the complex. Kultipin estimates that the deposits in northern Israel and central Turkey appeared after erosion of about a few hundred meters. So the Kavusin village in the Cappadocia region of Turkey. That's pretty cool. I mean, if the earth is 4.6 billion years old, like, would it really be that surprising that humans are a million years old? According to my estimates, such a depth of erosion could hardly be formed in less than 500,000 to 1 million years, Kultipin wrote on his website. So there's like, you know, his uh, hypothesis, I guess, maybe perhaps the theory, but there's some evidence to back it up, I guess, in terms of like, if you go through and you analyze the um, the erosion and everything, if that's accurate, then cool, that's something that we can address and maybe look into. He hypothesized that part of the complex was brought to the surface as a result of alpine erosion, mountain formation. According to his estimates, there is evidence to support that the construction material found in Ant Antalya, Turkey, which Kultipin calls the Dernokliv Dern site, is up to a million years old, although traditional scholars refuse to accept age, proposing that the place dates back to the Middle Ages. So that is basically said that uh, most uh, modern mainstream scholars refuse to even listen to the idea of what he's proposing, and they say it was the Middle Ages. So what they should do in just saying, no, that's not true, they should try to do some sort of peer-reviewed research, go out and refute what he's saying. I, I think that would be reasonable. So it's like, oh, okay, you're saying that this is 500,000 to a million years old because of this. Well, we're saying it's because of this. And then just put the evidence and then gather all the evidence and just objectively determine what reality is. Kultipin adds that as a result of the Earth's crust moving over the centuries, parts of the underground complex were plunged into the sea. He suggests that the similarity seen in countless megalithic ruins is evidence of a deep connection present in ancient sites that were connected like a giant prehistoric complex. 
According to Coltepin, numerous megalithic blocks weighing tens of tons could have been directly linked to underground complexes in the distant past. The circumstance gave me a reason to call underground structures and geographically related ruins from cyc cyclopean walls and buildings as a single underground terrestrial megalithic complex, writes Coltepin on his website. Okay, so he's giving his reasoning behind his assertion. So let's have the other scientists say, okay, you were stating that um, you gave reason to call underground structures and geographically related ruins from cyclopean walls and buildings as a single underground terrestrial megalithic complex. They should say, all right, that's your hypothesis. We're going to now disprove it based upon all of these uh, objective facts that are for certainty. And whatever the facts are, that's what the, the, sh that's what the decisions should be based upon, I think. Referring to the technological capabilities of the ancients, Kotepin says the stones fit perfectly in some parts without cement, and the ceilings, columns, arches, doors, and other elements seem to be beyond the work of men with chisels. All right, so that's fair enough, but like, can there maybe been some other form of technology that we forgot about? Or, you know, I did that video about how they might have raised Stonehenge with like those uh, like ancient uh, stone raising machines that they could push things around with. So who knows what they had back then? And adding to the mystery of these incredible sites, Kultman notes that the structures built in other places like the Romans or other civilizations are completely primitive compared to this one. Okay, so yeah, that, that very well may be true. But um, I don't think that in of itself proves what he's saying. But I mean, I still think it would be worthwhile to look into. Like, I just think this idea of just flat out rejecting anything that goes contrary to like a mainstream... Uh, understanding of something is not really what scientific inquiry is all about. We should be objectively looking for reality, discerning with our own selves what the truth is, and personally investigating truth, you know, trying to be as objective as possible. And this goes for everything in life, whether you're trying to make a decision or if you're trying to uh, determine what the best path to go on or, you know, just whatever. I think being objective, looking at reality for what it is, is a good solution to that. So I just thought this was pretty cool. I mean, I I think he has a, a an interesting hypothesis. I'm not sure if this is a, is actually you know a million years old, but if he proposes this and then someone else can't refute that, then maybe it is. So what do you think? Do you think it's you know balderdash or whatever <laughs> the term is that this place is a million years old? I mean, like I've. I say repeatedly in these videos, I need to just look it up. I'm actually going to look it up right now. Just like Google and um, cavemen lived in same cave for 200,000 years. Mm. Let's try out DuckDuckGo just to see if there's anything different. Yeah, here we go, right here. Neanderthals and Denisovans lived in the same Siberian cave for 100,000 years. Denisova Cave in the Altai Mountains of Siberia was hot property back in the day, at least to ancient humans who called it home for more than 200,000 years. So there we go. That's like the thing I'm always talking about that uh, I, I heard somewhere. I don't think it was from this website. Yeah, in a pair of papers uh, in Nature Today, they report that Denisovans, an extinct species of human whose genome was reported in 2011, occupied the cave from around 287,000 to 50,000 years ago. So think about that. These forms are this type of uh, ancient human lived in the same cave for over 200,000 years. And you know, that's a pretty, I guess it's becoming more mainstream like that concept. So if these humans were living in a cave for 200,000 years, now here's to say that there were not, you know, different uh, like civilizations throughout the world during that time or before then. Like over 200,000 years, you know, maybe there's different kinds of events in the earth. Ice age, you know, the, there was a small ice age during like the 19th century. So who knows like what has happened to humanity? But I just thought that was uh, 
worthwhile to make sure that what I've remembered is actually a fact. Because I've read so much stuff that like all the different things I read just kind of get jumbled together. But anyway, I appreciate you checking out this video. Uh, thanks a lot for checking it out. If you like this kind of stuff, I try to talk about all kinds of cool things on here. Uh, maybe one day I'll be able to set up a podcast. You know, that's kind of difficult to do. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate you checking out this video. And uh, let me know what you think about humans living in caves for 200,000 years. And if you think that this structure here is 100,000 years old. Or a million years old, I should say. So until next time, take care.